Pleasant day class! Welcome to Horticulture Module for Grade 10. This focuses on Quarter 3, Week 2 Discussion. So let's get started! For this week, we will going to discuss Integrated Pest Management. Let's first define what is Integrated Pest Management. Integrated Pest Management, or IPM, is an effective and environmentally sensitive approach to pest management that relies on a combination of common sense practices. IPM programs use current comprehensive information on the life cycles of pests and their interaction with the environment. This information, in combination with the available pest control methods, is used to manage pest damage by the most economical means and with the least possible hazards to people, property, and the environment. In addition, the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization defines IPM as the careful consideration of all available pest control techniques and subsequent integration of appropriate measures that discourage the development of pest populations and keep pesticides and other interventions to levels that are economically justified and reduce or minimize risk to human health and environment. Therefore, IPM emphasizes the growth of a healthy crop with least possible disruptions of agroecosystems and encourage natural pest control mechanisms. Let us know how IPM works. IPM is not a single pest control method, but rather a series of pest management evaluations, decisions, and control. In practicing IPM, growers follow the four steps. First, action threshold. Before taking any pest control action, IPM first sets an action threshold a point at which pest populations or environmental conditions indicate that pest control action must be taken. Citing a single pest does not always mean control is needed. The level at which pests will either become an economic threat is critical guide to future pest control decisions. Second, monitor and identify pests. This monitoring and identification remove the possibility that pesticides will be used when they are not really needed or that the wrong kind of pesticide will be used. Not all insects, weeds, and other living organisms require control. Many organisms are harmless and some are beneficial. IPM works to monitor for pests and identify them accurately so that appropriate control decisions can be made in conjunction with action threshold. Third is prevention. As a first line of pest control, IPM program works to manage the crop, lawn, or indoor space to prevent pests from becoming a threat. In, a, in an agricultural crop, this may mean using cultural methods such as rotating between crops, selecting pest-resistant varieties, and planting pest-free rootstocks. These control methods can be very effective and cost-efficient and present little to no risk to people or the environment. Fourth is control. Once monitoring, identification, and action threshold, indicate that pest control is required and preventive methods are no longer effective or available, IPM programs then evaluate the proper control method for effectiveness and risk. Effective, less risky, pest control are chosen first, including highly targeted chemicals such as pheromones to disrupt pest mating, mechanical control such as trapping or weeding. If further monitoring identifications of action threshold indicate that less risky controls are not working, 
the additional pest control method would be employed, such as targeted spraying of pesticides, broadcast spraying of non-specific pesticide is the last resort. This is an illustration of how IPM works. So, IPM, it is a science-based approach that combines a variety of techniques by using their life cycles and how pests interact with the most current methods to improve management, lower cost, and reduce risk to people and the environment. So, as we have discussed, IPM um, involves a com combination of different techniques to reduce or prevent pests. It does not involve a single technique, but instead it involves more or integrated techniques on how to prevent or to reduce the pests. Let's have the first process, identify or monitor. Determine the causal agent and its abundance. As you have noticed, it identifies a uh, pest or organism roaming around the trees. Number two, evaluate. The results from monitoring will help to answer the questions. Is the pest causing damage? Do we need to act? As pest numbers increase towards the economic threshold, further treatments may be necessary. If that particular pest you identify in number one and you have monitored that this pest is damaging your crop therefore there is a treatment that may be necessary third prevent some pest problems can be prevented by using resistant plants planting early rotating crops using barriers against climbing pests so in this illustration it features a barrier to hinder the pests in climbing the crop. Next is action number four. This includes careful selection of preventive and curative treatments for plants. So you need to act now. You have to prevent, you have to kill the pest that is penetrating on your crop. So you need to have a curative treatments for the plant. Number five, monitor. Continue to monitor the pest if it, is, if it remains low or decrease, further treatments may not be necessary, but if it increases and exceeds the action threshold, another IPM should be used. So, after you put a preventive or curative treatment, you have to monitor if that treatment is effective on that particular crop. If it's not, you have to uh, think of another treatment on how to cure or kill the pest that penetrating your crop. You are now ready to proceed on the learning task 1. Choose at least one pest repellent plant from the list below and plant it in your yard. Submit a narrative report showing your proof of planting and care of the plant. But before that, let us discuss first uh, this pest repelling plant. So let's start with marigold. The scent of a marigold will deter plant lice, mosquitoes, and even rabbits. Plant this in flower beds near your front or back doors, or even in your vegetable garden to keep rabbits and mosquitoes from harming the plants. Second, chrysanthemums. This might be the best plant to deter bugs. Ants, Japanese beetles, roaches, bedbugs, spider mites, silverfish, and ticks will stay away if you have some of this around. Some bug repellents use an ingredient in this flower because of how effective it is. These flowers deter ants, Japanese beetles, roaches, bedbugs, spider mites, ticks, silverfish, harlequin bugs, and the mint. Mint plants can repel spiders, ants, and mosquitoes. But be careful when you plant mint because this plant spreads rapidly. Fourth, basil. 
repel mosquitoes and house flies with this wonderful herb. Maybe even put some plants by your back doors to discourage them from getting inside and have easy access to basil when you want to cook it. Citronella grass. Everyone knows this is an ingredient in mosquito repellents, but a lot of people don't know it is a grass. Plant this grass in garden or have it in planters near your doors to keep mosquitoes and flying insects from getting inside when you open the door. Lavender. Nuts and mosquitoes hate a smell that so many people love. Plant it near windows and doors so the scent wafts into your room. Next, chives. Japanese beetles and carrot rust flies won't want to stick around your property if you have chives growing. Petunias. Add color to your yard while repelling asparagus beetles, leaf hoppers, various kinds of aphids, tomato worms, and variety of other pests. Bay leaves. This plant will rep repel flies and if you have a roach problem, you can use this to deter roaches in your kitchen. Next is garlic. Garlic, known for its health benefits and seasoning. Garlic plants deter Japanese beetles, root maggots, carrot root flies, cuddling moths, and can be planted near roses to repel aphids from eating your flowers. Rosemary. Rosemary will protect your vegetable plants by repelling a wide variety of bugs that will want to feed on the plants you're growing and plan to eat. Keep them back with rosemary. For your performance task, you have to choose at least one pest repelling plant from the leaves that we have discussed and uh, create your own video. You may follow the, the video that I have created so that you can do the task step by step. Good morning class! So today, I'm going to share to you um, how to plant uh, at least two insect repellent that is indicated in our room. So I have here a citronella or it's also called lemongrass. So technically, it is a grass. But first, um, I'm going to uh, share to you the facts about this um, insect repellent that we're going to plant. So this citronella plant is beneficial to our health. It contains iron, calcium, and vitamin C. And it is considered as anti-inflammatory and antibacterial and also antioxidant. And it has been reported that it is also good for high blood pressure. So, um, I bought this in the market. It's 10 pesos for this bundle. If we're going to plant this, we need to remove first the leaves. Okay? So, because the leaves is the one that is being boiled. And then, it will be strained. And that extract will be drained. As a sort of a medicine, like that, something like that. I will cut this into this part. So, this part of the roots is the one that will be planted. Right? So, and then I will cut this. The stalk and the roots. So we're going to plant this in our backyard garden so that we can have a citronella in separate color. Alright? So this leaves will be boiled in a glass of water or two glass of water. So I have here a 
sample of a juice. It's the extract of citronella or lemon. You can put um, sugar or much better if you have honey so that it will blend on the face. So it smells good. And you can drink it as a sort of juice or an antioxidant for our health. Okay, so we are now in the backyard garden and we will go into plants. Okay, so as you have noticed, I have already planted uh, some of the lemongrass. So I bought uh, this lemongrass a few months ago. As you can see, uh, it has the dried leaves, the cutted dried leaves, and there's uh, new uh, growing leaves in this plant. So we're going to uh, plant this as an additional uh, insect repellent in our backyard garden. So, in portion of it, so that we can put it as you can see, the soil in this plot is a very good soil because I put some compost here. So, I have to do I see. So, tabuna na natin siya. So, so simple. No need for expensive insect repellent. Just this citronella or lemongrass. You can have an insect repellent or pest reducing plants in your garden. Um, share ko lang, aside from it's good to the health, it is a um, pest uh, reducing plants, insect repellent, citronella or lemongrass can be added for chicken to enhance the flavor. Alright? So next is next insect repellent or the pest reducing plant that we're going to plant is the garlic. Okay. So peel this garlic and then this part will be the uh, part that will be planted. Okay. And as you will notice, <coughs> if it will grow, um, usable na ay dito sa part. So, I have also garlic here in this plant. I planted this um, last month. So today we'll go, I'm going to share to you how to plant this garlic. So napakasimple lang if you have garlic at home. No need to go outside. So add natin siya dito sa ating garlic. It's not too deep. It's not too deep. At least, it's not too deep. It's not too deep. So, it's not too deep. It's not too deep. It's not too deep. It's not too And then you'll continue water this until there's a shoot that will go. So I thought it's very good because I put a compost soap here. I need a compost soap a few weeks ago. So you will notice the soil is so uh, sticky like that because it is made from composts. And we're going to water this 
and observe for a few weeks. So in that case, you have your um, pest reducing plan. So after planting, of course, you're going to water the plant. Sprinkle only so that the soil will not have water. Okay, that's it. You are now ready to take the quiz. Number one. What is, what is IPM stands for? Letter A, Integrated Pet Management. Letter B, Integrated Pest Material. Letter C, Integrated Pest Management. Letter D, Integral Pest Management. Number two, in what steps in IPM program does a point at which pest population or environmental condition indicate that pest control action must be taken. Letter A, set action threshold. Letter B, monitor and identify pests. Letter C, prevention. And letter D, control. Number 3. In what steps in IPM program does manage a crop loan or indoor space to prevent pests from becoming a threat. Letter A, set action threshold. Letter B, monitor and identify pests. Letter C, prevention. Letter D, control. Number 4. In what steps in IPM program does remove the possibility that pesticide will be used when they are not really needed? Or that the wrong kind of pesticide will be used. A. Set action threshold. B. Monitor and identify pest. C. Prevention. D. Control. Number 5. Which of the following can be considered as pest repelling plant? Letter A. Citronella. Letter B. Rose. Letter C. Orchids. And letter D. Hibiscus. Check your work. Number 1, letter C. Number 2, letter A. Number 3, letter C. Number 4, letter B. And number 5, letter A. I hope you got all correct. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day! I hope you learned something from this video. For more videos and updates, don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. God bless everyone!